Chapter 2 Resistance and Guerrilla Warfare Resistance is the foundation of guerrilla warfare and was the reason it is so well received by resistance groups. But first, we need to define resistance. Resistance occurs as the active opposition of an individual or a group. A resistance movement is an organized component of a disaffected population that resists a government or occupying power with means varying from passive or violently active. Resistance forms when heavily motivated individuals cannot further their movement through peaceful and legal ways, so they move to more pressing and violent means. The nature of resistance happens because of many things, commonly organized into four categories. Environment, motivation, chance for success, and guidance. Let's start with the first one, environment. A resistance rebellion, or a civil war, begins in a nation where political, sociological, economic, or religious separation has occurred. Disputes of this nature have happened by a violation of rights or privileges, or maybe by the oppression of one group by the dominant or occupying force, or the threat to life and freedom of the population. Resistance may also develop because once greeted liberators have failed to improve an intolerable social or economic situation. Resistance can also be deliberately motivated from external sources against an assumed objection. Resistance can be active or passive. Passive resistance may be in the form of smoldering bitterness, which only needs leadership or a means of expression to grow the resistance. While some join a resistance to change something, some people join because of a natural desire to survive. Others may join because of a deep ideological belief, but all, regardless of initial motivation, are bound together to fight against a common enemy. Parts of the population assist the resistance movement as soldiers for the guerrilla force. Some serve as part-time guerrillas or in civilian support agencies known as reserve units, while others are a part of an underground network. The environment of a resistance group has a higher impact on the organization and tactics used by resistance. Because of the suitable areas of operation, mountains, swamps, forests, or jungles nurture open type guerrilla resistance. Flat plains or cities are more likely to lead to an underground resistance activity, although the possibility of organizing a guerrilla force in these areas should not be overlooked. Now let's move on to number two, and this is a long one, motivation. Motivation, like in number one, is one of the most powerful reasons why a resistance movement may occur. Strong personal motivation can be the only thing to start a resistance movement, while others force their ideology through violent means. Another motivational reason why people may join a resistance group is to keep from starving or to keep their livelihood. People may also do it because they believe they can gain more from enlisting to the other side. People who have lost loved ones due to enemy actions may fight against the enemy as an outcome of hatred. If the resistance movement is strong or gives the impression of being powerful, many may side with the resistance movement out of a feeling for personal safety. Others may join to escape recruitment into the service of the enemy but this can only be achieved if the resistance movement is well organized and the enemy has been weakened by other actions. The ego of a person can be a powerful influence on why one might join the resistance movement. Fear is another one and may enlist through no personal desire of their own and only doing it for the safety of their own and the safety of their family. After motivation, there are two short ones, a chance for success and guidance. Starting with the chance of success, people will most likely join a resistance movement if they have a higher chance of winning the war. Finally, number four, guidance. People will join a resistance depending on the support of popular figureheads, such as celebrities, politicians, and many more. And that wraps up today's lesson in guerrilla warfare. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like, and if you want to learn more, make sure to subscribe as I have barely scratched the surface of the book. We still haven't gotten into the special forces operations and tactics of a guerrilla force. As always, the book's link will be in the description. Just a side note, it is open source. I prefer the book 
because I can learn it better this way. See you next time.